So my name is Audrey Fondecave. I'm one of the editors and co-founder of Too Much Magazine of Romantic Geography. We publish Too Much Magazine of Romantic Geography once a year, 200 pages in English, and dimension are 182 by 257 millimeters. It's called B5. We publish in magazines and books under the name of edition OK Freds. We used to make a magazine called OK Freds, that's why. The magazine comes with a Japanese insert if you buy it in Japan. We are a small international team based in Tokyo. That's Tokyo. And although Japan represents about 70% of our content coverage, we work with different people worldwide. Because of the language of, and the look of the magazine, Japanese readers usually don't realize that we're a Japanese magazine. So we feel quite global about that. That's the Emperor Palace. The first question I'm asked about the magazine is always in regard to the title. What does romantic geography mean? Our interest as editors was to find a way to talk about subjects as important as architecture, urbanism, and evolution of big cities, while keeping in a tone and an approach that was still human and poetic. So we decided to gather individual stories about space. Here are some images about now-based uh, Korean artist Do Ho Su. He creates his shells of uh, the house he used to live in, so it's at the inside of the house, and it's made of silk, so it looks like it's floating shells. Really beautiful work. Tokyo is a very dense city. It's natural for us and those who live there to think about the relation to space. We have no choice to think about space there. This is Nakajin capsule. But for all of us, places are an entire part of our lives. It doesn't matter who we are, where we are. There is absolutely no moment in our lives when we are not in relationship with the space. Our goal at Too Much is to archive the correlation between us and our surroundings to be the keepers of these universal experiences. To make this possible, we work with a wide range of people. This is work by a, a couple, they both passed away. He was Japanese and she was American, Arakawa and Jins. They had buildings in Tokyo, the photo you see. And this is in New York, this is Dover Street Market. Of course, artists and architects are recurrent to each issue but we feature contributors from all different fields. We are interested in working with those who have visions, not the superstars or the star architects, but the ones whose projects are pertinent to society, whose work can reach beyond frontiers, just like Shigeru Ban. You can see him building a shelter in Africa, and he's been doing that all over the world, especially in Japan after the big earthquake. His shelter are made of cardboard. They're very light and very, anyone can make a shelter out of it. So this is the list of the country from the contributor we're working on with. So you can see the country they're from. And that's uh, the profession they have. Every issue has a theme, shelters, is the current issue. A fake mountain as human made nature. The body issue to name a few. It usually starts from with a broader idea, which is often gathered through reading, going to exhibitions, talks, performance, and observing the world around us. Often just one word may come to mind. Then we begin to explore this idea, pulling it apart, and it becomes more defined, more concept. We started to look for the theme in the work of artists and architects, but also in literature, in science, and in design, within as many fields as we can manage. We have a variety of different interests, and having a theme allows us to engage with a wide range of disparate fields. As we compile the work of our contributors, the theme grows and changes. The outcome becomes something way beyond our original preconception. So this is an article about the history of sitting down in Japan. It's written by a designer and historian of design. Sitting in Japan is very important. It has a long history. It has name for each position, as you can see. 
And this is from the Kurosawa movie. For the construction of the content, we keep by this an organic process. We try to find the person who knows the most about the topic we would like to write about or someone who has researched it. Often this person appears in our reading or in a relevant exhibition or talk. At other times, we find this person after visiting a place of interest or through another acquaintance. This is an article about uh, the geodam, the construction of the geodam, made by the development team. Uh, they are made of um, professors at Keio University. It's a work made in uh, collaboration with North Face and is based on the architect uh, by American architect Buckminster Fuller. This is a North Face work. They made a tent out of the um, geodome. Supposed to be very easy to open. I don't know. This is very hard to make. We try to make uh, on paper. It's very hard. You can maybe see the tent near the beach. Finding the right person and working with her or him to produce a piece that can fit our magazine is a slow process. This is because we work back and forth on the content and editing until our collaborator and ourselves are both satisfied with the result. Through this process, we can say that we often form a strong relationship with our, many of our contributors. A relationship that leads to different kind of projects that enrich our partnership with them and help us build deeper content for our magazine. We have been working with photographer and explorer Naoki Shikawa since the first issue. We report on his exploration around the world, which just released an archive of his climb in the Himalayas, featuring 10 of his expedition there. So that's the cover of the book. I brought some uh, two actually with me, you can see at the shop. Uh, it's a closed cover and it's covered with a poster. So when you open, it becomes a poster of the mountains. At the base camp. So he was the youngest uh, climber of the rest from Japan and he's the only one in the world who always archived his travel there with writings and photos. And this is a talk we make with him. He's an explorer, so he travels the world always, but when he comes back to Tokyo, we organize talks where he shows his work and talk and meet the people. You can see him in a Bhutan um, traditional costume. The visual aspect of our magazine. The content is the most important factor for us to make a good magazine. When the contents, text, images, and edits are interesting enough, design doesn't have much to do meaning we don't need exaggerated design. Design cannot make a boring magazine interesting. Where does design work in the process of making a magazine? When we make a magazine, we sometimes feel like we are making a sculpture. Thinking about the thickness, the weight, the texture, we want a magazine not to feel near linear. And the effect of the paper is to delineate each article as well as provide a tactile aesthetic. And since we have a wide range of subjects and impressions, we use different papers in a single issue. So that's a same photographer, Naoki Shikawa. We covered something called Maribito. It's a um, rural tradition where they wear this costume uh, and they'll come to your house, so they bring the divine to your house. It's all over Japan, from north to uh, southern Japan, Okinawa. So that was also the cover. Some of this, um, well, it's not, a, I don't know how to say, it's not a tribe, but some of these people usually are not photographed by photographers, but Naoki, I've been working with them with years, so he's the only one who has uh, been able to be so close with them. You can see them in the house and you can see in, in, on the map how it works in Japan. Collecting paper samples from the printers, making a dummy before we print, this physical work is key to making a good magazine. We believe that the selection of paper tells you a lot about who we are. 
the size, page number, why you want to print in black and white. All the details can be much help to tell our stories. This is where design works and we cannot do it on a screen. Our artistic director, uh, Akinobu Maeda, is an entire part of the editing process. Apart from too much, he also works as an art director for a man's fashion magazine called Popeye, a very popular publication in Japan, as well as other publications. He's especially appreciated for his work with printed matter, but his work is rather diversified, including web content visual and Evan Yokohama baseball team visuals. His intention with too much is to balance the magazine identity with the content to produce something which is at the same time classic and unexpected, a little bit twisted. He says, quote, I think perceptiveness is the most important quality in the design realm. These are photographed by Swedish photographer Anders Edström. A story about two sisters uh, wearing the clothes made by their father, designer Christopher Nemes. The photographers we work with are people we admire and we are glad to support. Our favorite part of making too much is probably to be able to meet all the talented people we come across with the hope that too much can be a window to their work. Apart from the same content of the magazine, which represents about 70% of it, we have special feature editorial one of them being Romantic Geographic Archive. As I mentioned earlier, that content is a collection of text and images of an individual relationship to a specific space. Here's an example of it. So this is by Purba, who is the head of the Sherpa, the guide to the Himalayas. And his favorite place is not the tip of the mountain, but rather the fields where Ikipiziak, when he's not uh, guiding people to the mountain. We also have some visual stories in each issue. This is a work with the Japanese photographer Maiko Haruki, called Interstice. This can be about clothing, object, people and places. The story, these visual stories, are usually connected to the general theme, but is slightly different from the rest of the content. Whatever it is, fashion or objects, we try to imagine them differently on how they're usually perceived. And we use them as a tool to create these visual narratives. We also have another section called the city, which is like a visual portrait of a chosen city. This is, uh, for example, from issue six, uh, Techno Parade in Paris by photographer Sophie Jane Startford. And this was New York with Vito Aconci, who passed, the artist who passed away last year. So our writer and uh, photographer for this article followed him through New York and he shows them the New York he knew. Most recently, we have started featuring fiction, like this one, which is a sci-fi story from the 60s by Shinichi Hoshi, who was the first sci-fi writer in Japan. Too much is also a way for English readers to access to some Japanese text and writing that are difficult, if not impossible, to access to. This was never published before. As I mentioned earlier, our offices are located in Tokyo, the area of Shibuya, Daikanyama, and Nakameguro. This is was taken just before I flew here, so we, you can see we are in spring in Tokyo. It's blooming. Tokyo is always evolving, an entity into itself. If you go away for a few days, you will notice many changes when you return, both good and bad. On the other hand, some ancestral institution, even formalities, have remained untouched. Places like temples, parks, the emperor palace, to name a few. You can witness 
the influence of that contrast in the content of the magazine. This is Meiji Shrine. Uh, this was photo by um, Amy Su, Californian photographer. We've been working with her from the beginning. And then we released a book called Tokyo 35N. She's been coming to Tokyo for years and she asked people to draw a map of their fairy place and she tried to find the place and take a photo. Thanks to Google Map, uh, work has been easy a little bit. This is Shibuya, you see the maze. Tokyo represents 23 worlds, 26 cities, 6,220 kilometers square, and 14 million citizens. A fascinating side of Tokyo is the intersection where the urbanization of this giant metropolis meets a more human side, the things that cannot be planned, the way citizens find to make the cities theirs, like urban gardens or movable houses, like this one by uh, Satoshi Murakami. So he's made uh, this house out of styrofoam and he's been walking around and asking people if he could use a, a place in their garden or houses. It's been working well. He was invited to do the same in Sweden. There are also many visitors, architects, artists, researchers, philosophers in Tokyo. It's really hard to catch them due to schedule, but if we are lucky and very persevering, we are able to meet them. And they're usually in a good mood. Tokyo always put people in good mood, the food, the weather, the people. So one of the visitor last year was Crystal, who came back for an exhibition as Project The Umbrellas. This is part of the issue on shelters. This is him. What usually conceive the visitors to collaborate with us is to having the magazine in their own hands. Printing matter is a labor of love. It costs a lot of time, effort, and money to print on paper. But having a physical, tactile object that is temporary, gets patinated, it gets old, and can be destroyed, burned, lost, brings an immediate positive reaction. When you hold it, you feel right away how temporary and precious it is. Another of the artists visiting Tokyo, this is Anna D4 from Britain. The language is another choice we made for too much. Being a team comprised of Japanese, Aussies and French, English was not our only option. But it was a tool for us to communicate on a larger scale and gain an international relationship with our readers. About 25% of our readers are from Japan. But too much is not considered a Japanese magazine. If you go in a bookstore with a foreign division, that's where you find us. Being in English also means having a direct exchange with collaborators and a team of translators. This is a New Zealand artist uh, Frances Uprichard from The Body Issue. That's her in our studio in London. So since we publish only annually and we're not so good at networking, we engage with our readership with a series of events, lectures, workshops and exhibitions. All of these events are related directly to our content. For example, these posters with Japanese artist Koki Tanaka started with an event performance that we organized with him. Every participant brought a type of tea and we all drank it together. The taste was forgettable, but we designed the poster that was included in Too Much and also sold at the Venice Biennale where Koki represented Japan. That's the back of the poster. Another example would be The Migrant and the Mirage. This one started as a series of interviews of people who had migrated to Tokyo, telling these personal stories. This is Guy from Brazil. And this is Li Wenbiao, originally from China, who is now stateless. He lost every nationality. He's stuck in Japan. We asked each of them to lend us an object that they brought with them when they migrated. And we held an exhibition of the items at Center for Cosmic Wonder in Tokyo, which is a beautiful space for performance and fashion 
arts and craft. This project is still going on with photographer Taro Hirano taking picture of the collection that has now become 50 objects. And that will be our next book. We are working on another project with the same photographer, Taro Hirano, and that will be for 2021, with the construction of a residential building with gallery and concert hall by Hiroshi Hara, the one in the bottom of the photos. The other two being Fumihiko Maki, and in the middle, Harata Isozaki, who just received the Pritka Architecture Prize. Hiroshi Hara is a real visionary architect we respect very much. He calls this project of the construction his last project. He's 83 years old. He's mainly famous for his construction of the Kyoto Station. We have documented every step of the project, from the old building to the destruction to the reconstruction, and we'll do so until completion. The book will be launched at the same time as the building, and an exhibition of the project will be held there. So that's our next two books. In the issue we are currently in the process of making, our ninth issue, we'll explore the sacred. We will enter subliminal spaces, some reserved for the transcendental, other created to harm the preternatural, and some occupied by that which we cannot see with our human eyes. We are asking ourselves questions such as, what does it involve to build structure for ritual? How do we connect with the immaterial from our earthbound spaces? When, how can we contain the divine? Can we contain the divine? We'll examine the nature of spirituality. We also have a new addition to our project called Kogoe, meaning whispers, little voice in Japanese, that will supplement too much magazine. Kogoe will focus directly on literature featuring fiction, essays, and poetry from writers and thinkers globally. As the name suggests, if an idea is powerful, it can be told as a whisper and still be heard. And Kogoe aims to share lesser heard voices, ideas, and live experience through the collection of writing. Thank you. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so you've got the magazine, which you... Yeah, I brought them with me, a few of them. Uh, <laughs> so we do have copies here. Yes, we do. Um, you have the book um, publishing projects yes. as well. Yeah. What else do you all do? So I, I, am I right in thinking that you're a group of people working together? Is there like some brand work in there? Do, do you do other design things? No, no. we do. Too much. <laughs> just, That's just enough. <laughs> <laughs> we don't work for people. We just do the magazine. You, you just do. Separately, your... we do other projects, but at the group together, we only do that. And of course, people will be able to tell you're not Japanese yourself. No. So I'm so French. You're French. So how, how do you find yourself in Japan in the first place? Um, after I finished my studies of art in France, I got. Uh, a scholarship from the Japanese government to study in Japan, where I studied for a year, and I stayed there. That's it. I thought I had more to see, and I'm still <laughs> fascinating every day. You're I'm still finding country. more things. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Audrey, thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you. The last of our uh, magazines now, um, is a magazine, um, again, it, it deals with uh, cities uh, and the experience of, of being in cities. 